Uh, missionaries together, uh, about the last four years we've supported you, but you have actually been on the field of New Zealand for 18 years. And you are 17 years old. That's what I don't get. <laughs> but uh, give him a hand. He's going to give us a little... I told him, I said, give us a preview of coming events. Okay, go ahead there. Well, how many of you are thankful that no weapon that's formed against us shall stand or shall prosper? And I have to tell you that our, our first term there was very challenging. And I would like to just show you actually a couple photos. If you guys could put up the next photo. Um, as many of you know, my, me and my dad, we were ministering there together for my first term. And so I went to go help him and... And uh, in our city, it's very, very expensive there. And so you can't own any of the land. You can only own the buildings. And the government owns all the land, and you have to rent it from them. And so we were paying about $5,000 a year for the land rent. And the government came back to us one year, and they said we want $55,000 a year for the land rent. And so we didn't know what we were going to do. And actually, we had to literally, this last term, walk away from the buildings that my father had invested his entire ministry in there for the last 18 years. The buildings were worth two and a half million dollars. And after it was all said and done, we had about $100,000 left after the sale. We had to do a fire sale on it. Now, I didn't get up here to just depress you, all right? But it was challenging. I, if I'm going to be real with you, missions work is challenging. Doing ministry is challenging. And I don't want to sugarcoat it for you. But can I tell you that no matter what Satan throws your way, when you are doing things for the Lord, the Lord always gets the last say. Can I get an amen on that? And so if you can show up the next photo, when we lost our buildings, we had to change the way we did church. So we had to go portable. When we went portable, we met this man on the left. His, his family's name, they're the Spikermans. And so he came along, and he started uh, coming along, and he actually had some, some deep issues in his life. And he was very racist when he came to our church, and God began to do a, a tremendous work in his heart. And he got that right with the Lord. And then his family, who had been out of church for years, they were Christians, but they had been church, out of church for years. They decided to come to church, and his mom and dad are deaf. And the boys know how to do sign language. And so they started our first sign language ministry, right? So then after that happened, through this young man, well, his brother right there, his name's Darren, just to the, to the right of the young man on the left. Darren, he had a friend, if you can show the next slide. And he brought a friend, his name's Nere. Nere, when he stepped into the house church that we had, me and my wife was, were, were leading it one night, and when he, he stepped in, he said, I'll come to the small group, but I will never go to your church. Never, ever, ever. I've had a horrible experience with church. Any of you know somebody like that in your life? And he says, I'll never come to your church. Six weeks later, on my doorstep, I got to lead him to Christ. Right? And then, and then, the woman that, that he had been living with for a couple years came forward, and she got saved. And she said the only thing she knew about God was just that she was angry at him. She only knew Jesus as a curse word. She had no foundational understanding of the gospel. And on the same day that she accepted Christ, Nehre's son accepted Christ. So no matter what Satan does, God always gets the last say. And that was a few weeks before we left. And a few weeks before we left, he came to us only a week after she had gotten saved. And he said, I think it's about time we got married. And so no one had to talk to him about it, but God's doing change in people's lives. And so I just wanted to get up and encourage you. I have more Sherry's, uh, stories I'm going to share tonight and I'm going to preach tonight. But I just want to let you know that everything you guys are doing for missions, it makes a difference. You're fighting a battle in other countries that is spiritual and you're getting victory. In Jesus' name, can I get an amen? All right, I'll hand it back over to you. All right. Preview of coming events, I told you. Did a good job. Give him a hand. Amen. Let's all stand together one more time. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds.
be seated. Miss Sherry Hall. sitting in my office this morning and everybody comes up and practices and I started hearing 
It's echoing through the hallways, and I'm going, wow, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And Sherry, thank you. I know you're just one of his tools that he uses, but wow, what a blessing. And we're thankful for Christmas season. And we, it's an amazing thing that happens, corporate worship, coming together, and, and uh, Sean and, and, and all of the band and everybody has, uh, all, all of the choirs and all of the one boy, everybody has practiced and has been for months. Yeah, August, I think you started, is that right? August and all of these things are now coming together and next Sunday night uh, you just don't want to miss you want to invite folks you want to have folks come invite your friends and we I understand we seat something like 250 in the back and that's for the meal and I don't know how many we've got but I think there's still room for for now but I think as time approaches it's just going to we're going to start getting, and we're advertising, and we're trying to tell people, and so <clears throat> this is this is next Sunday night, and it's a big. Uh, let, let me let me tell you, it's just huge because it tells of our Lord's birth, and that's what we that's what I love about being able to come together and and see. You know, we dusted off the songs, right? It's a once a year thing. Uh, your songbooks and our, our music probably, I guess, from here till Christmas probably will be incorporated into these services, right? And, uh, and so it's just something we do. It's tradition. It's part of what we, we, we start hearing the songs. But every song that you heard this morning points you to Jesus. And I think that's a very important thing. I think it's, I think it's awesome that we... We get to have uh, this uh, emphasis, and and so uh, here at here at Bible Baptist Church, you're going to hear a lot about Jesus, and then we we move on up to Christmas Day with our with our uh, heart of Christmas meal and and being able to feed and and try to uh, again that day is dedicated to the Lord and. And we've been doing this now. I think this will make our fifth time, maybe something like that, that we will have uh, uh, that we will have the, the heart of Christmas meal here at the church. And a lot of you help, and we we can't do it without you. And, and you choose to uh, give time that day. And uh, we we have seen through the years people. We have, a, we have a message and we have an emphasis and we, we, we've seen people get saved. And uh, uh, I, I, last year was, was special. I had a classmate that I went to school with. Uh, she received Christ that day. I actually went to elementary school with her and, and all the way up through high school. And then to see her come with her grandchildren and, and she made a profession of faith that day and I was so blessed and, and she ultimately was baptized and I see her occasionally here in the services and, and uh, but you know just things like that you can't you can't put a uh, value on this time and and the the biblical emphasis today's message really is not a quote traditional Christmas message but it it certainly is an emphasis about, uh, about what the Lord does in our life. And I'd, I'd invite your attention to Psalm 31 and verse 14 through 16 is where we're going to be reading, Brother uh, Rodney, 14 through 16. We're going to start there, and uh, I'm going to ask Brother Rodney to read. But I want you to, there's going to be a, in verse 15, I want you to notice that phrase, that first uh, part of the verse. And that's what our message really is going to be centered around today. If you would please stand, and, and Brother Rodney is going to read. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. 
My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Verse 15. Go back there if you would please. And, and let's all out loud together just say the first part of that, that verse. My times are in thy hand. One more time. My times are in thy hand. Let's pray, Father. We have come together and from your word we are reminded that we're here by permission, your permission. That we have movement, we have being, we have life, we have body to occupy temporarily, Lord, but ultimately we acknowledge that our times are in your hand. Speak to us in a real and personal way. We'll pray this in Jesus' name we pray, everybody said. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We're here by permission. You've heard me say that a lot. My, I, I, I'm reminded of that. My, my breath is in the Lord's hands. My steps are ordered by the Lord. I, I'm just like you. We woke up today and it's a new day. Another day on this earth, an unpromised day that was given to us to fulfill for who? Not ourselves, for Him. And by your coming to this service today, a verse of Scripture is brought before us that the Lord used in my heart and stirred in my heart, and I thought, as I prayed, and, and that's what I do, I, I, I seek out what the Lord wants me to speak about, what I want to, what, what's to be preached. Preaching should be, and I try my best as a human being on this earth, faulted, flawed, and failed as I am, I, I, I just want to yield to the Lord and say, Lord, use me, and, and if he takes this verse and puts it in my heart and and this is what the Lord wants, then that's what I'm, I'm just a messenger boy. I'm just, I'm just sharing what the Lord has put already in my heart through His Word. That's what, that's what we do. And this verse spoke to my heart. It caught my attention. It reminded me who's in charge, who really is in control. Is that, is that, does that make sense? Is that, does that speak to you like that also? And, and so when I think about, when I think about that thought of our times, notice that's an interesting phrase, my times, not necessarily, we, we acknowledge my, our time is in his hand, the clock is ticking, so we could, we could all acknowledge that there's a boundary of time for us. But then involved in our time on this earth are the times, the things that we do with time. And isn't it just interesting enough to us today that our times are about our choice? We choose, God gives us the ability to choose what we do with our time and our times, the things we involve ourselves with during time on earth. You came this morning. This was an important enough event that you came to it. Now, some of you, it's habitual, right? 
It is with me. I, I, I told the Lord back when I was 18 years old, I want to be here every time the door is open. So I set a course for my times on this earth. I wanted to include public worship. Now, public worship at Bible Baptist Church, we open the doors. We're open for business. Sunday morning, it's a great time to come and worship with the people of God. But boy, I enjoy Sunday night too. Sunday night's a great time to come together. We're gonna, we already got an advanced preview of uh, Brother Ben Walker, and I can't wait to hear more stories of people getting saved and what God's doing in New Zealand and what God's buried in your heart, and you get to share with us. And we just get that little glimpse through him of a ministry that we have been involved in now through Brother Ben and Raylene, and we watched. The, they came here but, but before they got married. Yeah, they were, this was prior to being married. We got to meet Raylene, and she was reminding me. She came to the old location, and uh, I don't know how many years ago that was that you traveled with, with uh, Dalton and Paulette. Is that right? You came with them, and you came to eight years ago. And see, Raylene grew up in, a, in Ventura. Baptist Church where Brother Lewis McClendon is the pastor and he's a great friend of ours and Raylene is, has a wonderful family serving the Lord back in Ventura uh, Baptist Church in, in Ventura, California and she grew up a California girl and, and just, to, just to think of the story of how Ben met Ray you know and it happened to be that the sending church for the Walker family just happens to be Ventura Baptist Church in Ventura, California. Well, guess what happened? Gosh, they're sitting here together now in the service, married for how long now? Eight years. Wasn't that something? And what a ministry now and life they have together. And it's just God, but their times. Uh, you have been brought up in... Brother Ben, you're, you've been in church since you were a baby. I, I, I suspect you probably have been in church all your life, about all you know, really, right? And ministry now is a part of their life, and they've dedicated themselves for mission work in New Zealand, partnering with uh, Ben's dad and mom, who have been veteran missionaries 18 years in New Zealand. And then prior to that, Brother Dalton pioneered works in, in East Helena, Montana. I got to visit there. Butte, Montana. Uh, then pastoring before that in El Dorado, Kansas, and no telling where else. But he cut his teeth with Brother Bert Harrison at Southwest Baptist Church. But then the roots go back deeper to Calvary Baptist Church, the Walker family. Charles, I went to school with Charles, graduated with Charles Walker, 1974 graduate. He now is in heaven. He, he passed away, what, about two years ago or so? And uh, a classmate of mine uh, up in, up in uh, Montana. But, uh, you know, just, just things like this, times. What about, what about the choosing of times? The choice, what we do with the times of our life. You've all arrived today Make, having made choices in your life. Now, in the midst of the times of your life, what's the most important event you'll ever, that will ever take place in a person's lifetime? What's the most important event that ever took place in your lifetime? There's Ms. York, who just, she loves to talk out and tell her story, and I love it. Thank you. She said, when I got saved. I agree with that. How long has it been since you heard my testimony about salvation? I told you we have first-time visitors here today. They've never heard my testimony of salvation, so they're going to hear it. 
11 years of age, Bible Baptist Church. Who wants to finish it? Best day of my life. The supreme moment in the times of my life, my salvation. Do you, do you track back to that? Do you trace back to a moment, a time, and a place? You need to. Because that salvation event, that being saved, being born again, now set the stage for different motives, different reasons for being here. Our eyes began to be more lifted toward heavenly things than earthly things. Earthly things began to, began to fade a little bit. It's not quite as important. What I try to tell people is, you know, enjoy the journey, but don't plant your tent, tent stakes too deep here because you're going you're gonna to move out of that tent. You're going you're gonna to move out pretty quick. And the only thing that will matter is what you did for Jesus Christ in your lifetime. That's really all that it, that's really what matters with the times of your life. I think that's ice falling, right? I don't know whose vehicle that hit, but <laughs> so what do you what do you what do you think about the times of your life? That's what this message is really drawing to, and so can I can I reference just about four or five things to do with your times? What are we what are we to do? So let's begin Psalm sixty two and verse eight. Let's go there. So what are, we, what are we going to include? What do you think we ought to draw our focus on? And who do you think we ought to focus on? And here it is. What does it say? Here's, here's the first thing you're going to do with the times of your life. Okay, here they are. Here it is. Here's the top of your list. You ready? Everybody say it. Trust in Him at all times. Pretty important words. Trust in Him at all times. Has the Lord ever failed anybody in this room? Has He ever disappointed anybody? Now, has any human being ever failed you or disappointed you? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to happen. But our ultimate trust is not in people. Our ultimate trust is in who? Him. Trust in Him at all times. I want every young person to set a course for the times of your life. Isn't this great advice? What can you do for the rest of your life, for the times that you're, of your life, and what's going to happen? Listen, I can guarantee every young person in this room, you're going to have trouble. There's going to come some trouble in your life. I can promise every young person in this room there's going to come something out of the... I, I, from, from out of left field that you never dreamed of. By the time you complete your life, you're going to review it and you're going to go, wow, preacher, preacher. I remember Brother Hayes said, something's going to come at me that I never dreamed of. It's going to come at me. Could be physical, could be financial, could be marital, could be... I mean, there's a lot of different things you do with the times of your life. But you can always have this verse in your heart. Trust in him. By the way, the hymn is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead. Trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us and Selah. Anytime you see the word Selah, it's just a pause and it means there. What do you think about that? So what do you think about that? at all times. Trust Him. So we're going to begin with that thought of trust. We Don't become so focused on the trials and the difficulties of life and lose our focus of Christ. Matthew 14, 22, 23, look at this. And straightway Jesus constrains his, his disciples to get into a ship and to go before Him unto the other side while He sent the multitudes away. Look at this. And when He had sent the multitude's way, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the even was come, he was there alone. Now, 
Now what's verse 22 say? He constrained the disciples to get it. He, their assignment was a temporary one, get in the boat. And if you read the rest of this text, do you know what happened? When, they, when Jesus went up to pray, they were on the boat, and what happened when they got on the boat? They got out into the Sea of Galilee, and there was a storm. The Lord allowed them to go through a storm? Yeah. And Peter's, they saw Jesus coming, walking on the water. And Jesus calmed the sea, peace be still, and taught them a valuable lesson and us also that in the times of our life, keep your focus on Him. Storms are going to come. You have already experienced some storms you never dreamed of. And you can trust Him through them, can't you? Haven't you had that experience? You can trust Him. And so Peter, Peter by the way, when Jesus came walking on the water... I mean, when Jesus came walking on water, that's when Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. And he said, Lord, save me. Took his eyes off the Lord. You put your eyes on the Lord. You can trust Him. Number two, let's go to the word praise. Praise. Psalm 34, 1. Look at this. A psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. Look, what does he say? After that experience, before Abimelech, by the way, you'd have to research that and look it up. It's an amazing story. He, he faked being insane. For some of us, that would not be a stretch. I didn't name names. I'm just preaching. <laughs> but he, he, he acted like he was nuts. You'd have to read, it's, a, it's an interesting. But, but here's what in his, listen to this, in his heart. After that experience, after being delivered, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. There's another reference to doing something with the times of your life. Hey, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There's an assignment for you. So we're going to trust Him completely with your heart, mind, soul, and body. Why don't you trust the Lord all the way? Don't go halfway. It's not going to work. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your ways or your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Life verse. That's one of my solid life verses. Psalm 3, 5, and 6. But praise, go back to the verse just one more time. There in Psalm 34, 1. I will bless or praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Just, is there any, any reason why you wouldn't want to praise the Lord? Is there any reason? Through the most difficult time in David's life, he had to act like he was nuts just to get, save his own hide. You'd have to read it. But there, there's an example. The Lord didn't leave him. Why praise him? He's sovereign. He's omnipotent. Because it, it, you, want, you want your load lightened? <laughs> praise his name. That'll help. Number three. This is going to be... I, I, the cookies are on the bottom shelf today. This is just a simple message taken off on the, the phrase at all times. And, and look what else we find. Love. Love. Trust, praise, love. Proverbs 17, 17, look there. Here it is. A friend loveth all the time, at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. Now let's connect the dots. It is in a response to God loving us. I want you to look at 1 John 4, 7 through 11. Look at this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested or made known the love of God toward us, because God, 
because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, now we're focused on who, that we might what? The times of our life that we might what? Live through Him. That's how you live life on planet Earth. You live it through Him. Try, try it on your own for a while. See how, see how far that gets you. See which ditch you end up in. Amen? <laughs> Got any amen? Anybody ever experienced that one? Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the what? The substitute, the propitiation for our what? Sins. Love. Love reflects Christ. John 13, 34, 35. Look at this. A new commandment I give unto you that you, what? Love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Very important. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have what? Love one for another. It's really important. It ought to be so ooey gooey in here that when we walk in, there's just love everywhere. I'm not talking about this fake, phony love. Brother, I love you. Got a knife in your other hand and you're stabbing him in the back. Come here, get closer to me. Come here. It's not that fake, phony stuff. No. If only through Christ we can love one another, I promise you that. Trust, praise, love. What else? Very important. What are you going to do with your times? Psalm 106, verse 3. Let's look at it. Blessed are they that keep judgment. Blessed are they that keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. You know what righteous, this sounds like something nobody in the room can do. You know what, it, you know what our goal should be every day? Living right. <laughs> Not living wrong. Living right. Right. How about that for a, a new way of living on earth, right? Holiness. You say, I, I'm not holy. I can't be that. I'm a sinner. I'm saved by grace. Preacher, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, you can. Funny. Funny, the excuses we give just because, we, uh, because of there's some habitual sin or something we do or something we can't, you know. And there is a besetting sin for everybody in the room. You have, you have your struggles, don't you? <laughs> you? You sure do. Look yourself in the mirror right now. There, there's no perfect person in this room. But, but, listen to me. Every mom and dad in this room, you had a set of rules for your kids, didn't you? Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay, now, it's your assignment, go. Be, be, be good children. Be the best, and that's what every parent wants their kids to do. And you have your rules for your home, right? What happens when the kids break them? Oh, my goodness, yeah, we got the, we got the you know, discipline, correction. If you love your kids, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There's a lack of correction of kids. Kids are out of control. So the old preacher up here, I'm just going to give you a little, little advice. Corporal punishment is a fine thing to use. It will correct the kid. And every once, I didn't say every time, just every once in a while, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Get do right. My mama's sitting over here, mama. I love you today, and I didn't have to go through therapy, but boy, you whip the daylights out of me every once in a while. And I'm glad she didn't know everything I ever did because I'd have had more whippings. Whipping, whipping a kid, corporal punishment. Now the kids are going, what happened to time out? Oh, I would rather do time out than getting whipped. Brother Hay says, whip me. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, my, my dad, he, Mama, you'll testify, won't you? Listen, 
my dad, by the time I'm the third child, number three, she will tell you, am I right, Mom? Daddy, by the time I was born, quit whipping the kids and left that to you. Is that right? And you did, you did more than you should have maybe sometimes. But I saw smiles on my mama's face. Now, my dad, though, on the other hand, you know what he decided to do? He would sit us down and talk to us. I'd rather have a whooping. Give me a whooping. I get it. I get it over with. I'm out. I'm playing. I'm going my way, you know. But uh, I don't know how I got off on that. But anyway. Oh, yeah. Holiness. Doing right. <laughs> holiness is a, is a habit of being with, with God in relationship and doing what he wants us to. You know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hmm, thy will be done on earth as it is. Thy will be done. I've got to exchange his will for mine. I, got to, I, got, I don't want to do it my way. I'm going to do it his way. That's the, that's the exchange. And to be, be fully satisfied in this. You know, Psalm 15. Just turn to Psalm 15 just a minute. There it is. A Psalm of David. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a, a reproach against his neighbor, in, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. That's a, that's a great testimony of the way to live life on planet earth. I mean, there's just so much that you can draw from. Uh, Psalm 24, look at it. There's just a few verses there. A Psalm of David, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the world and the, they that dwell therein, it's the Lord's, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the, how, the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. And there's that word Selah again. There, what do you think about that? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty and the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even them that lift up ye everlasting doors. The King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And that final word again, Selah, there, what do you think about that? Holiness. And then finally, I want you to look at this in Psalm 119 and verse 20. What are you going to do with the times of your life? My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Interesting, King James, my soul breaketh for the longing. Some of you have another version. What does it say? Say it. You there yet? Oh, you were depending on this one, weren't you? Caught you. What's it say? There you go. Continually overcome with a longing, a desire for your judgment. Do you, listen, do you have a desire? Do you desire the Word of God, the will of God, the way of God? Do you desire? Is that really a core part of your being on planet Earth? Do you really, really, really have that? as a driving force, when you wake up in the morning, do you wake up to serve the Lord? Do you have a desire to do this? Where is it at? Where does that come from? It begins with that act of grace 
in your life. It begins with that act of salvation. Have you been saved? Then you have this same common desire that every other brother and sister in this room has, and that's to do the best we can to serve the Lord with our heart and trust Him, <laughs> to trust Him, to love Him, to praise Him, to have a, a life lived for Him, and I have this desire to do that. It's all tied together for the times of your life, for the time you're here, the things you're going to dedicate yourself to do. And by, by the way, you only got 24 hours in a day. You only got 24 hours in a day. That's the gift that was given to us. I, I don't know if one of these hours of this day we may have to check out. Your last hour will be on this earth. And what you have done with the times of your life, you're going to give an account for. Your Lord's going to review your life. What things you've done in your life after your salvation, good or bad, you're going to stand before your Lord and give an account for the times of your life. It's profitable. John 15, 3, I'll just start there. We're cleansed by the Word. You know, um, by, by the things that we do, you, now you're clean through the Word which I have spoken. Do you desire the Word? Ephesians 6, 17, we're not only cleansed by the Word, we're Look at this, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is our, is our listen to this, our sword. It's for, it's for protection. Uh, Acts 20, 32, what else are we, does the Word of God do for us? And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. It edifies us. We're converted by the word. Psalm, 1, Psalm 19, verse 11, look at this. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is, what? Great reward. Psalm 119, 103, and look at this. Psalm 119, 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. You know, it's profitable as a, as a this word is, means so much, and I have a desire for it. Because it changes, you know, this book changes everything about what we do and why we do it on, on this earth. This is the life-changing book. Psalm 119, 105. What else will it do? I like this. Thy word, everybody say it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I need God's help. And that's my desire, to make him, to make him my trust, my praise, my love, to live for Him, dedicate my life, and that's my desire. Is it yours? Let's bow our heads just for a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, all of this is concerning our times. And we began with the verse that said, my times are in your hand. Lord, you ultimately are in charge of my time my times. I, I, I'm so thankful you allow me to choose and you've given me the word to help me make the right choices. You have not left me nor abandoned me nor any other of your sons or daughters in faith in this, in this lifetime. Everybody that's in the room today, you, God's, God's looking on the inside, not the outside. He sees your heart. He knows your motive. He knows your very words of your heart. He knows what you're thinking. Let's stand together with heads bowed. I, I don't know if you need a work of grace in your life. Maybe, maybe, maybe right now you need salvation. You've never been born again. Today we take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You can be saved. You can be born again today. This can be the start. But you have to be willing to acknowledge that need in the times of your life. That's what you need. You need salvation. You need a place today, maybe a place to come before the Lord in your heart. You already are saved, but you need a place of fellowship on our way to heaven together. 
I, I don't know your need, but I know that God can meet that need. If this is the place God is calling you, by statement, by letter, or by baptism, we'd receive you into membership. Brother Sean, would you sing? And whatever the need of your heart is, you come right now. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Try me, Master, today. Lord, wash me white, Lord, whiter just now, while in thy presence. thankful today for your coming what a blessing Howie would you come and lead us in dismissal prayer thanking the Lord for what he's done for us let's pray Lord I love you and thank you for this day thank you for salvation Lord that you have given so freely that I don't deserve but yet you gave it to me anyway I'm praying for those who weren't able to be here this morning for whatever reason I ask that you bring us back safely tonight in Jesus name I pray amen right? Uh, Heart of Christmas meal and Nicaragua.